Hey guys, welcome back again. Welcome back to the channel. Um, this is going to be part two of the build series for the extra NG 91 inch. And I can't wait just to get cracking with this model. So let's roll the intro and get on with it. First things first, this has kind of made me laugh. Uh, this is the documentation that comes with the model. Now, again, in the V1 kits, you tend to get a manual with photographs in it of how to build a model. But what they're really saying in this, and I won't read out all of it, is the model comes so assembled now, it's pretty much a case of minimal gluing, which is just the rudder, um, so any, it's only control surface is not hinged, and just really bolting bits in. So what they've done instead, which I think is, is pretty smart, is they've gone ahead and created some videos online on the website, which you can go and watch if you want to see how it's done, um, which I may pull up and have a quick look at. And there's also a data sheet available on the website as well. So that's it. And then on the back it just says, this is not a toy, blah, 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 safety, safety, safety. So where should we start? We're gonna start with the wings. I've already located a little bag, which is marked main wing. Let's get the wings out, get them on the bench. Everything's hinged. I guess we just can chuck the servos in. Let's do that. Okay, so we have a wing panel. I sit down, we have a wing panel out. Um, I've located Savox servo, 1270s, pretty much my go-to servo. I've already got an extension lead on this one and it's got heat shrink around the extension lead so it won't come undone. That'll give me just about enough length to come out into the fuselage. Um, we've got the main wing bag here, let's see what we've got inside. So two rods, one for each wing. Bag in a bag. We've got the horns, and these are the same as the other models, it's not changed. So there's four effectively in here because each horn has two parts and you've got two plates as well. So the horn goes through the plate, making sure it's the right way around and that goes into the, the pre-slots. But I've got a little bit of a tip for you as to cutting out the square and roughing this up. So we'll do, we'll do that in a minute together. So that will go there. And then we have the bolt pack which is mainly the parts for the horn and the rod. So that's one side at the moment as well. I don't need that. So first thing, just working our way around the server goes. So the head that I've put on here, um, I've looked on Streamflex website and with this model they recommend four two inch heads and they recommend one four inch head and one 1.5. Now the four inch head, which is here, is obviously for the rudder servo. It's full width for, for closed loop. As there's four two inches, it's clear there for uh, ailerons, two for the ailerons, and then two for the elevators. And then the 1.5 inch, which I don't have, is actually for throttle servo. So of course, I'm putting an electric setup in this NG, um, not a gas setup, so I don't need that head. So I know I've got the right head here. Uh, I'm assuming the servo goes that way round. I'm assuming that really because of the length of the rod that there or thereabouts will line up with the aileron if it was the other way around so effectively it was further further towards us it wouldn't line up with that point so it's got to be that way around and also that's where the tube is inside so to show you quickly without gluing we're going to be sticking those through there actually no let, let me show you what I'm doing then I'm going to do it so firstly I'm going to use this as a template I'm going to draw around this and then I'm going to cut out the square that I'm lef left with and I'm going to keep the piece of covering that's on here. Then when I glue it all down, I'm going to be putting the covering back over the top. So you see white there. Um, when I put these in, I'm going to rough up both sides so the glue can adhere nicer to them. Obviously it's going to go through the holes anyway. Then I end up making like a sandwich with the white piece of covering, the two parts going through here, in there, hopefully you can see that. And then if I move my hand out of the way, that will all slot down together through 
I won't push down too far at the moment because obviously we're not doing it for real. But that'll slot down in and that'll give me the. No, that looks wrong. What's going on here? That rod's looking rather long. It's going to be that way, it's going to be this way. 100% it's going to be this way. Just do that again. Just, that's why you've got to dry fit this stuff and just check that you've got everything right. So that would go obviously down, that would go in. That's going to give me full air on movement, so we're not we're not touching here. And back. We're probably going to end up going to the, on the outer arms. And also I can adjust the servo. It just looks that rod just looks a little bit long for me at the moment. But obviously that we're all up in the air, we're not down. So let's do this for real. Let's get this in here. I'll get it connected and I'll show you guys what it looks like. And there we go guys, this is the finished article. So servo's in, screws in obviously, essentially coming out. Can't see that, but it's out the other side. Um, two inch arm on, using the supplied bolts and washers on the arm. Using a supplied rod, that will actually go obviously in here. This is still drying, so I cut out the white plastic, sorry, the white covering first to make the square. I then glued the supply plate in place, glued the covering on top and pushed the arms through and that way you get the white still on top rather than the see-through plate. I think that's a little bit tidier. Obviously there's a little bit of an edge here but I think that's okay when you look from top down it's fine. Something I didn't point out earlier on as well with these wings, I didn't need to hinge the air on. So now on the V2 sorry, V3 or whatever this is. I don't know if it's V3, V2, but whatever. On the latest Extreme Flight kits, everything comes pre-hinged with the exception of the rudder. And what they're actually now doing is they're pushing the covering down into and out of the aileron as well. So you get no gap for air to go through. And I think that's just a really, really nice touch. It saves you a ton of work, not a ton of work, but it saves you some work having to hinge these yourself. And then literally all I've done to the wing is put the servo in, mount the horn, I'll connect that up later on once that's dry. I've used 30 minute epoxy on that, just the zap, zap epoxy. I've used five minute, five minute formula. Why is that in the 30 minute box? Ah, I see what I've done. I've got two boxes. Anyway, I've used five minute, it's fine. It's epoxyed in, so it will be dry shortly. Um, oh yeah, and, and that's that. Uh, little tip. If you do get epoxy on the covering around this when you're doing it, obviously it can squeeze out. Um, you don't want to be shy of your epoxy, you want to make sure you get plenty of epoxy in there. Uh, if you do get it in there, just use a bit of tissue, a bit of alcohol spray, not directly on there, but on the tissue first, and then just wipe around it very carefully and that'll clean up your aileron, rather than leaving epoxy, which over time will just look horrible and probably go yellow. So yeah, alcohol spray, always have that in the workshop. And of course, kitchen towel, tissue. So with the exception of just connecting that push rod up, that is both wing panels now done. Perfect. So let's put this away, put this one side, let it dry and get on with the tailplane. So let's take a look at the tail section before we start. What I've just noticed is that's actually two rods for tail sections. Obviously you've got the main, slide that in. But you've also got one at the front as well. Obviously we'll go through the fuse large. I think that's a really nice touch. And, and the wing's actually exactly the same. You've got the main wing tube, then you've got one behind the main wing tube as well, which I'll show you when we go on to do the fuse large. That's rather nice. Pull that back out, tuck that out of the way. Um, if you've not watched the build video, sorry, the unboxing video already, um, you would have seen this, but rather nice. Carbon ends there, quick release system as well to put these on. Hopefully very quick, we'll see that when I get that far. Um, as before, let's put the aerons pre-hinged. Covering goes inside the hinge line, which is nice. Covers up the air gap. I think that might actually be a separate piece over there. No, I think it lays the covering, goes in there. So they cover that first, then they cover the other parts over, which is good. Um, and all we need to do is to put the horn on. So we need to find the pack, and then the servo, each or each servo, at the right angle, you might be able to see it better. Da, 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 da. It's difficult to do. There we go. Um, sits inside that hole there. 
and then the arm pops out through here. And it should be as simple as that. Uh, let's get the pack out. There it is, stab, stabilizer, a horizontal stabilizer. They'll be pretty similar to the wing. Two rods, which you, you can't see on the camera. It's two rods from the servo to the horn. Screw pack, same amount of screws, nuts, washers, bolts, as per the wing, there's two servos. And then of course, the horns. And I'm gonna do exactly the same as what I've just done on the wing, which is to use the plate as a template, like so. Draw around it, cut around it, take the covering off, save the covering, so I put it back on top and then put the horns through. Before I glue them, just scratch up the surface a little bit so the glue bonds slightly better. It's gonna bond okay anyway, it's gonna go through the holes. Put And put that through there. I'll probably use the same five minute epoxy because that worked very well last time. And I'll show you afterwards. So let me get this done now. And there we go, both servos are now in. Rods connected, horn still drying. I've got to stick this covering down a little bit. The same process as before. And again, on the other side as well. So it was a little bit fiddly to get in there. I just had to use a Dremel just to open up the back edge of the servo box. Just to give me about another half a mil to a mil to be able to angle the servo in, angle it in there, but no, no big deal really. And that's pretty much it. So once they're dried, I can connect both the rods up and that is the stabilizers done and now the wings done as well. So let's get on to the to the fuselage. Hey guys, so first off, I think we're gonna mount the the rudder or hinge the rudder. Um, but to be honest with you, I was having a bit of a problem working out where the closed loop comes out because let me just show you this really quickly if you can see it on the screen. So on the rudder, they've not marked where the horn goes. Whereas on the ailerons and the elevator, the horn had a square cut out. So I was just trying to work out where, where's the horn here? So I thought, okay, let's work backwards. I'm gonna put closed loop in this, um, pull pull rather than pull push. So closed loop, server up front rather than server in the rear. And then I couldn't find the exit holes for the closed loop. And I've been here for about 10 minutes, messing about, trying to work out where does this closed loop exit so there's no holes. So I look down the fuselage, which I'll just show you really quick. So I thought I'll look inside and see if there's any obvious signs, obviously the model's on its side right now, as to where the closed loop would exit from here. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see, but you can just about see, no, it's not gonna come out, it's too dark down there for this camera. Uh, but there's little tiny tubes on one side and the other side. So that gave me the rough bearings as to roughly where the closed loop should be coming out. You can't see it on camera unfortunately, but I can see it with my eyes. So, I then had a look through, through here. And again, you won't be able to see it on the camera. I don't think we go in. No, you won't be able to see that. Um, but I can see in there, the other end of the tubes. So it's nice, it's nice that they've put tubes in so you get a nice exit hole and the tubes and you know, you're not going to get this caught up but <laughs> from here you can't see the hole anyway after much messing about i just want to show you this make sure you're on the on the right spot let's zoom you in a little bit so by looking through here i could see the tube and then i couldn't feel anything with my finger but i worked out just about that that is the hole for the tube, so that is where the closed loop's going in, and just to prove the point. Nice, I mean, it's nice that there's no exit there. It's nice they put tube in, but that was a pain to find. So what I can do now is I can measure down, um, take some measurements maybe from the back, along, measure down, and the other one on the other side should be roughly the same size, sides, roughly the same position. Yeah, so now I've got that. 
I can offer up the rudder and when we obviously it's not mounted yet so if I just line it up and do a dry fit test okay that wants a little bit of jiggling at the top because too much a gap but I should be able to then work out roughly where the horn's going to go again same system before with two but now I've done it it looks like it's going to go here and here like that yeah that looks right oh what a pain so it's basically it's on that yellow line not sure why they've done that. I guess it's because if you're using pull push, you're gonna be mounting the server back here and you can probably mount it either side. So therefore, they don't wanna cut out both of these because you might not need them, or mark both holes. Um, if you're using closer like I am, pull pull, then obviously you're gonna cut both holes out. So that's why they've done it really, to so give you some options. But that was a pain to find. So anybody else build one of these? Um, I'll put the measurements in the description of this for you just so you can get a rough guide. It should be roughly the same, give a good starting point. And there you go, just as a dry fit, that is the correct place for the holes. Just straddling either side of that yellow line, which works out about right for the closed loop. Right, so let's get that back on the bench, put it on the other, mark the other one up, get the other hole made for this, then work out why this rudder's not quite, not quite close enough for me. Okay, exactly the same as before guys. I'm just gonna show you this one. I'm just gonna draw around it with a pencil. Then you draw around the front because it comes pretty much onto the crease. Pop her out. Then with a sharp knife, cut on that pencil line. Sometimes you're gonna be going through multiple layers of covering. Just be aware of that. Be careful, be careful how much pressure you're putting on. Don't really be cutting into the wood, just through the covering. And once you've done that, pick one of the corners see if you've cut enough, which looks like I have. That's that, and then you can save that to put it back on. I think I did just see on a video with uh, Jace and his dad, I'll link that below as well, is that they actually spray these. So they spray them all up to match the plane. So I could do that, they look pretty cool if they're blue. Um, but I've not done the others. So I've not done the wings or the tail. So this time around, I won't spray them, but I think next time around, I will just uh, clean these up, get some spray on them, get some lacquer on them, and then mount them afterwards. I think it just look a little bit nicer, but that's fine. So the next bit, which I didn't show you before, there's my block. To get your sanding block. This is a perm grip block. They've been around for absolute years from when I first started the hobby. And you just want to scuff up these edges a little bit just so the glue sticks a little bit better. So I'm holding my fingers there on purpose. I don't want to scuff up the bit that's not going to be outside, only the bit that's going in the middle, which can have glue applied. A little bit of light. I like sanding. Let's do the other one. And just hold my fingers there on purpose. Doesn't need too much. And there we go, it's camera. You just about to see it slightly out of focus. There we go. That's that done. I'll do the other two while I'm here. 
and then what I'm going to do is get this glued on, get the patch back on top as well, exact same process as before, and then we'll get ready to glue the rudder and I'll show you that process. And here we go guys, both horns now on the rudder, they'll come up pretty well, I quite like that covering going back in there just to finish it off. They would look nice actually if they're spray blue, I mean I guess I could still mask up and spray but quite frankly I think I'm, I'm fine as they are. It's got a little bit of covering lift in there so I've just, just glued this one. But we'll get that sorted out before it goes on the model. So next up I need to get the hinge, don't I? So I've just checked all these holes to make sure they're, they're deep enough and they are. So we'll do a dry fit in a minute once that rudder's glued. I have also run the closed loop through while I was waiting for the glue, just on both sides. You see it through those very small pinholes. And while I was there as well, I ran the two extension leads for the rear elevator servo. So let me just show you something inside, which I think is rather nice. They've pre-installed, I say they, Extreme Flight, have pre-installed a tube all the way down. So you can literally just thread your extension leads, again on the website, it tells you what size extension leads you need. Two of them down the hole, down through the tube, and then they pop out. Quite easy to get out at the end. And also, sorry for the bad filming, but um, got this nice little hook here. So you can just like push them in through, and then leads will stay there. So they're not gonna get lost inside, inside the fuselage. Then obviously when you connect in, I'm sure there's probably a gap in the tail plane for the wires to go. So I've got the extension leads here with little keepers on them, just to make sure that they're not going to come loose during flight. Job jobbed. Right, let's get this rudder on. Here is the dry fit with the rudder. So obviously by dry fit, I mean there's no glue in there right now, it's still dry. Little gap at the top, but I can't do anything about that because obviously it's all pre-hinged. As long as it's not binding anywhere, which it's not, I'm getting plenty of movement. If you can see that clear enough. Yeah, there we go. Plenty of movement on the rudder. Okay, so the trick when it comes to gluing, slide this out a little bit, holding the camera at the moment, it's slightly harder, is to is when you glue, obviously pull the rudder right out, but only glue up to about here, where my finger is. Because then when you push in, the glue will squeeze out into the rest of the hinge. So you want to really make sure you avoid getting glue on the actual joint of the hinge. Um, if you do, you can clean it off with the alcohol spray. So I'm gonna go ahead, put some glue on this, mix up some another five minute epoxy, get it pushed in, get it lined up, and then check that I've not got any epoxy leaking. And there we go. The rudder is currently gluing. Nice small gap there. It's probably about a mil, mil and a half. Happy with that. I've just thrown some, I mean, literally, I mean, look at the status of that. Just thrown some mask tape around it just to hold the rudder in to make sure it's really being pushed in to the fin so it doesn't slide out of all the glue or move just while it's setting there. I've had that happen before. So I tend to just throw some mask and tape on. Comes off nice and easy. Okay. So we're doing pretty good. Um, what should we do? I think I'm going to leave the closed loop for a minute. I think what I'll do is just throw the servo inside. Just so we can say all servos are installed. I won't connect closed loop just yet. You can see the servo hole is there. Get the servo in and then servos in. I've connected the linkages on, but I've not done the closed loop yet. I'll save that until the rudder's dry. All right, rather than doing the engine next, I think I'm gonna get some wheels on this. So we're gonna flip her over. So next up guys is the undercarriage. So we're gonna fit the undercarriage on and we're gonna fit the tail wheel assembly as well. Um, as well as putting all the wheels on. Um, now when it comes to now when it comes to fitting the undercarriage, you've got to make sure it is the right way round. So it has a thicker edge at the front and tapers off towards the towards the back. Should be a case of uh, four bolts and we're in with a bit of Loctite. Let's get it done. So with the undercarriage now attached, 
and get the wheel axles in place. Okay, so the axles are done up tight for a minute. Um, I did forget for these on the, the cuffs. So um, I've undone the axles, put them back on. And I'm just gonna show you a little trick. So if you push them down to where they need to be, and then just draw a pencil line on the inside. Sorry, yeah, on the inside. And then slide it out and use your silicon glue. So I'm just using this stick it silicon glue and put it up to the line and push it down or hold it in place. And you shouldn't need to tap it or anything, that should be more than enough. I mean, especially on electric, not too sure about petrol, but it works for me. I'll get those on now and then we'll carry on the wheels. So guys, just want to take a moment to show you this wheels. I think it's pretty cool. Um, so what you have is normal uh, axle, just going through here, or axle if you like going through here. Uh, two screws on the side to hold the spat on. Then you have this little tiny spacer in here, which is a spacer with a piece of ply on it, which is angled um, for the spat. Then of course the collet is built into the spacer, and that means you've got absolutely no wobble, very little play there. I mean, I could tighten it up a little bit more and get rid of that, but I think that's about, about right. So nice job there, Extreme Flight. Just check that. Perfect, I like it. Nice finish, and of course the wheel's not gonna hit the spat because it can't, because of the axle here, and it can't go the other way because of the spacer. Whereas on my other Extreme Flights it has actually started cracking front and back where there has been a little bit of wobble. No, I'm happy with that. Let's get the other one on. And there we go, we have the finished wheels. Pretty cool. Looking good. And of course, tail wheel tucked away inside that fairing as well. Just bolted through. Rear peg glued in, so that now works the rudder. Guys, before we go ahead and mount the motor and the ESC, I'm gonna open up one of these cutouts here for airflow, so that obviously the model's upside down at the moment, but if the ESC mounts here, then we get air going through, through the hole here. And then along the back section, I'm gonna open up a couple of holes for ventilation as well. Let me just show you that. You may remember these from the unboxing. So the idea of these are, is you can cut out, well, they're pre-cut really, just cut the covering through, then you can drop these on and screw them through and they're obviously already cut out to so look quite nice. So you can have up to three. I think what I'm gonna do, I'm not sure, I might just do the rear two together. So they are together, so the airflow flows nicely nicely through. And leave the front one. The idea being, pull out the front here, air will go through the fuse large, then come out these rear two vents together. Yeah, let's uh, get that done now. And there we go, both vents in. I think I'll stop there. So there's an option for the, the third one at the front, but that should work nicely for me. Air through and air out. Okay guys, so next up we're gonna install the motor and we're gonna be using the Blazing Star standoffs, which uh, we should recommend it. I'm happy with that. And of course we're putting in the X-Power 60cc motor, which we recommend for this model as well. The motor's now on, it's all locked tight. Standoffs are the correct length. I've just used two, I think they're two mil spacers to bring that out and that gives me a 1.5 mil gap between the spinner and the cowling. And I've just put some mounts in. So with the leftover spacers I've taken out from the standoffs, I've used those as mounts for the ESC so that the ESC is gonna be not on the deck, but slightly off the deck. Let me just show you. So this will, go in place here, obviously undo the bolts, put that in place, and it'll give it a good kind of 10 mil away from the deck so the airflow can go through down the deck, as we said before, underneath here, and out through the through the rear vents. Now I can't put that in place right now. I've done the connectors on one side um, to connect to the motor, but on the opposite side, I need to get a connector. Now I was gonna use, um, well I am gonna use QS8s, on this, so I'm going to use QS8 connector there, the anti-spark connector, into a small extension, and then onto a Y lead 
and then change the connector for the batteries. So pause on that for a moment while I order the QS8s. Guys, while I'm waiting for that ESC connector, I just thought I'd do an initial check on where I might mount some of the components like the batteries, the switch, um, the receiver. So this is my first kind of go at that. Obviously nothing's in place right now, nothing's actually mounted down. This is where I'm thinking I'm gonna put the two batteries, one each side, the power box switch in the middle, main flight packs would be roughly there, probably the other way around. Uh, once the ESC is in, the lead will come up through the side here, probably go into Y lead, probably can put a small extension on it, into a Y. Um, what else is gonna say? The wing wires for the servos will come through the side here. And I'm gonna use some of the extreme flight connectors. You've seen me use those before. Um, just so it's tidy here, so that it's basically like an MTX connector. It's a normal server lead to an MTX, then into a plug that goes here, wires go underneath, then into the receiver. I've just put order those, so I'll show you those once they arrive. And so that's probably where we're gonna end up. Uh, but before I go on and actually get this stuff mounted, I think the next job really is to pick up the cowling. And we'll go ahead and put the baffles inside the cowling, so that's all ready to go. Once the ESC is mounted, I'll just put bolt the cowling on. Let's do that now. Okay, so onto the, the cowling. So the only job we really have to do on the cowling um, is to fit these rather nice baffles inside or air deflectors. So I've just realized they only go around one way. If we look inside, you can see it's almost keyed because you've got you've got raised parts here. It's a nice area where we can get the epoxy onto. So literally, if I can just show you on camera, around the right one. Trying to show you on camera. There we go. So you just slot in. So put some epoxy on and then just push them on in place. So I just dry fit them so I can show you and then I'll glue them in a minute. Push the other one on like that. And then from the from the front, you can see you've now got nice air deflectors going in and also makes it a nice tidy finish. So they're just carbon, already painted black. I'll get them glued on and then that is the cowling finished. So guys, I've managed to progress with the insulation. Um, first off, I think you've seen this already, but if you haven't, ESC is now mounted. We've got a nice air gap using the remaining parts of the standoffs. I've gone for a QS8 connector off the ESC and that's purely because the wires in the ESC are quite a big gauge and I quite, I quite like these connectors as well. A little bit heavy, but that's okay. I've made an extension for this connector, which goes through to a Y lead. There we go, the Y lead there. And the two batteries you can see are in, in place as well. So the Velcro straps on the batteries, Velcro underneath as well. Two flight packs will be going either side. They have Velcro on them. They will have Velcro straps going over the top, just through the middle there. You can see the power box switch is also now mounted, uh, which drives the two batteries. The battery connectors are here, so I'm easy to remove these. And then while I was at it, I thought, you know what, I'll just wire up the receiver from the two extension leads that go from the elevators and also the rudder servo and the throttle servo. So I needed to do that to make sure the motor is spinning in the right direction before I put all the cowling back on and tidy up these wires here. So that's what I'll do next. We'll get the cowling on. We'll put the top hatch on as well before we do so. That will hopefully be the last time the cowling comes off. Secure those wires. Um, and then after that, we'll put the prop on, so I'll show you that. And then it'll be time to give it a bit of bling and add the stickers. Because we are pretty much there. I thought I'd just take a minute, guys, to show you these um, MPX single wire server plug connections. And the idea of these um, basically just gives you a, a better plug. Now, I use these in uh, Big Blue, and they do the two-in-one connection, so I have two servos in each, power in each aileron, so I tied that up. But I'm gonna use these again, even though it's a single servo, just so I've got like a nice interface to plug it, the aileron in and out of all the time. Um, let me get these out of the packets so you can see them. Here we go, here they are. So, so basically, I'll put one down. This one will go inside the fuselage. So it slots into a hole down here. There's actually a cutout, you can't quite see it, 
um, but there's a very fine line so I can cut out around and there's two screws already so that'll sit nicely inside there the other end will go underneath then into the appropriate receiver channel but one on each side obviously and then on the aileron we'll have a ma the matching connector and then it'll just be a case of sliding it through the hole and then plugging it in so it just acts as like a small extension lead as well if you like I'll get those fitted now so you can see them work and there we go guys that's one half of the connector you can see nice and easy I've done a bit of cabling in here as well I'm not overly happy with the cabling at the moment because you can still see quite a lot through all the carbon so I'll probably try and tie that up a little bit later on um, while I was doing that I also put the cowling back on which I think you've seen put the spinner on and the prop as well take this off quick there you go, that's better there we go prop so I think the only job I have left now is put the other half of connectors onto the wing which take two seconds they simply plug in and the wings can go on um, but it is literally just putting the graphics on so let's take a look at those so guys the build is almost complete and I am just so pleased with the quality of this model I think that's probably come across in this video so the final touches really are to add the stickers add the bling so let me show you what ships with the model here we go so these are the extreme flight stickers that ship with the model and to be honest with you there's nothing wrong with them they look pretty smart um, extra ng there right red right lettering all, all look very good kind of reasonable size um, this is the model first time you guys have seen it all together just about get it in shot it only just fits in my small workshop <laughs> Stop joking about that, at least I have a workshop. But yeah, look, it looks absolutely gorgeous as it is. I and mean, there's nothing wrong with it, I could just put these stickers on it. However, those of you that have watched my unboxing video of this kit will know that I brought a set of graphics from B&E. &E graphics, if you've not seen those, the link will be below in the um, description of the video. And here they are, so nice big extra energy. Um, they've got backing on at the moment, or front and backing, so you can't quite see the, the colour. But I won't pull that off just yet because I will be applying them very shortly. X Power, 60cc, that's the most that's in it. Nice iMac sticker. Now, one of the reasons I use Beanie graphics, firstly, the quality is really, really good. Um, they're proper vinyl stickers, but they also do packages for the model. So rather than me selecting each of these individual stickers, they've done a pre-design of what this would look like. So let me throw that up on the screen now so you can see. There we go. So there's the website. There's how the stickers look. There's one of the designs and you just select the size you want, add to basket and then ship it through. So that's what we're doing next. We are gonna be applying these graphics. Now I'm not gonna film me applying the graphics. Um, I've done a separate video on that already which um, I'll link below as part of the big blue build, which is 104 inch extra. Um, I showed you how to apply the graphics in there. So I'm just gonna get these on and then show you the finished model and do a close up all round of all different bits that I like about this model. Bear with me. Hey guys, I've just finished putting the stickers on. It's taken me the best part of three and a half hours, but I think it's well worth it. Um, I can't wait to show you, let's take a look. here we go best angle I can get in the workshop probably so we've got starting from the front with the prop we've got the face that was pretty difficult getting that lined up on both sides but I think it's come out pretty well then on one wing panel we have the extreme flight going across the aileron coming across the front X power sticker. I was going to move it further up, but it just didn't look right here. So I just brought it back and leveled it up with the front of the canopy. Left hand side, sorry, other side. Extreme flight, or sorry, extra NG rather. Down the fuselage. Extra NG at the rear. 
iMac stick at the back, just going through the fold of the rudder, bit of funny angle from here. And right at the very back, if you can see it, if you tie the sticker, and obviously the matching up on the opposite side as well. And that is my sticker pack complete. I do have a couple left over. I have two more X-Power 60 stickers. I have the Beanie graphic sticker as well. I'm gonna keep it like this for now. I may put a couple of little cheeky stickers on the spats. Uh, friend Steve does that, I think it looks rather nice. And I'm definitely gonna put Matt Tacker RC on the pilot there as well. Just need to go and uh, cut one out. So that is it. So the plane is complete, but I just wanna show you a couple of small bits on it, which I really like just before we finish this video. So let me do that now. Right, we're gonna start off with these quick release catches on the canopy. So there's, there's four of these. Zoom out so you can see the other one at the rear. Obviously two to each side. Let me show you how these work. So these are just a case of pulling out and then pushing back. This one's a little bit tight, there we go. Push back. And then that's this side unlocked. Let me lean across and do the other. Bang, that's it. As easy as that to get the canopy off. Nice. You've seen the hooks underneath the canopy before, which they, they lock into. Little carbon hooks there. They move it out of the way, and I'll show you the second feature that I really like. So if we zoom in side the fuselage. Let's move it across a little bit. And it's these quick release wing catches. Now watch this. Simply same system, pull out, push up, and that's it. Now the wing is loose. I don't know if you can see, but it's hard for me to pull across from this angle, but the wing is loose now. I can actually pull the wing right out. And what I like is the fact this, this peg comes up. Now the idea behind this is you can't put the canopy on. So if you haven't secured the wing correctly by pushing this, pulling it out, pushing it down like so, now and get the canopy on. If the wing's still loose, because you haven't done the mechanism, you can't put the canopy on. So it's just like another safety check. And it's just really nice touch. And obviously these lock into the canopy as well. Um, so quick release wings. Put that one back on. Spinning around. We also have a quick release towel system which just saves so much time. So on my V1, you've got basically two bolts each side to do, but you can just see it there on the bottom of the screen. Love this. Pull out, and that's it. Towel is now ready to, ready to come off. So this actual release system locks in these two pins front and back on the one release. Really nice. Let's show you, actually take be so quick putting this together at the field. Push in, pull that peg out, and that's it. It is, it is locked. That's locked in place, that is not coming off. That's a really nice feature, extreme flight, right on there. So I reckon normally I keep the tail plane on the planes because I've got enough space in the van, but I'm gonna leave that one off because it's just a case of two so release, two quick releases, and we're done. Uh, let me show you the install inside as well, which you've seen throughout the video. But just to finish with, so I've got a little bit of tidying up left to do. So we've gone for the receiver in order there, obviously the rudder servo, closed loop system, that's nice and nice and tight. We've got these quick connectors for the wing servos, which just plug plug in now, nice and easy to do. Um, back main battery packs of, of Outpro down secured. Obviously going through the Y lead there. They will they will plug in, those cables will be out of the way slightly. Then the two flight packs. So using the digital switch down the bottom. Flight packs got to have uh, Velcro on them yet to secure them in place. I've not done that, that's been delivered today. And then we can go fly. Yeah, 
So that is pretty much it. So it take a little bit of tidying up to do with some of the wires. You can just see through through the gaps. But I'm pretty happy with that so far. And that is the plane. <laughs> right guys, that just about concludes the builds. This was part two of the build series. First part was unboxing, of course. Second part is just, we've done the build all in one go. So anything left to do is to actually set up the model now. Quick setup on the transmitter and go made in it. So please join me for the third part where we're gonna do that. We're gonna do a very quick setup on the transmitter, set up one flight condition. I'm also gonna be using my brand new toy, which is a Angle Pro 2 5-in-1 digital throw instant meter. Now I don't need to do instance, that's preset on the model, but I do want to do throws. So I bought a digital meter to work out how much throw I'm getting on each control surface. So we'll do that as part of the next video. And we'll also include the maiden flight on the next video as well. Guys, thanks, thanks if you've made it this far. I know these videos sometimes are a little bit long, but hopefully you've enjoyed watching this. Please hit the like button and please also subscribe to the channel. It really helps me uh, drive forward with these videos. And of course, put some comments below. Let me know what you think. Do you like the graphics? Do you not like the graphics? Any comments on the build? Do you have one yourself? Throw it down below and I'll reply to you. Right, see you next time.